Welcome to the second part of the Aerogrid 2.0 course. My name is Jan Soren Schwarz and I'm a PhD student working at the Office Institute for Information Technology in Oldenburg, Germany. Um, yeah, after the introduction to course simulation given by Peter Polanski, I will now focus a bit more on one specific um, course simulation tool, the course simulation framework Mosaic. Um, it has been developed at the Office Institute and is used in many projects like for example Aerocrit 1 and 2. I will start in this video with giving a theoretical overview over Mosaic, um, yeah, what you can do with it. And then there will be a second video where I will show some tutorials um, and yeah, going through the code and show how you can implement um, a simulation scenario with Mosaic. Then after that there will be a next video um, about a more complex use case which then shows how a multi-energy network can be integrated with Mosaic um, integrating electricity and uh, heating credits. So as um, already explained in the first part Co-simulation aims to integrate and reuse heterogeneous simulation components. So the idea is that um, when we want to do a simulation of different domains together, uh, we don't want to re-implement already existing simulation models, but we would like to reuse already exist existing established tools which are um, yeah, usually used in the domains and integrate them in a, in a new simulation. Um, as you can see here on the left hand side the idea of a co-simulation framework is that this um, framework defines the interface and each simulation software which um, yeah, fits to this interface and implemented it can then communicate to the co-simulation framework and so you can easily um, connect many simulation software or so simulation components together and um, yeah, integrate them. So for this, the co simulation framework has to um, yeah, allow to specify simulation scenarios for the simulation components which are coupled, and then it has to coordinate the data exchange during the simulation and also the scheduling, so to take care at which point in time which simulation components should be executed. Um, yeah, and Mosaic allows here to couple simulation models which um, follow the discrete time and also the discrete event um, approach. So, um, yeah, models which are just executed by a fixed step size or also uh, models which have somehow events, so they are not um, executed in, in a fixed step size, but only when some events occur. Mosaic is available as open source software under the LGPL license. You can find the code at gitlab.com slash mosaic and documentation you can find at mosaic.readthedocs.io. So, um, yeah, the Mosaic core itself, um, yeah, isn't so interesting when you want to do a simulation because you don't really have integrated some models. So, this is what we call the Mosaic ecosystem. What is, um, yeah, the interesting part for doing simulations. So, there are some simulation models available or can be easily um, added to Mosaic. There are also some interfaces for simulation tools, like for example Panda Power or Power Factory, which can be used for um, yeah, power grid calculations. There are some wrappers for programming languages, for Java, for example, or C Sharp or MATLAB, so that um, new simulation models can be easily integrated. We have also some wrappers for standard interfaces like FMI or OPC UA, which can be used to, to integrate simulation components. And we also have some visualization and data storage, like for example HDF5 file-based um, data storage, 
or InfluxDB, which can be used for visualization together with Grafana. Um, yeah, but how does um, Mosaic work? So how looks the architecture um, when we want to integrate models and um, yeah, build a scenario? So here on the left hand side you can see um, the Mosaic core, which has a, a simulation manager and a scheduler, which are the two main parts. Um, especially for the sim manager, the component API is um, the important part because this allows to couple um, yeah, simulation components. So this red part is um, part of Mosaic and this light blue um, part has to be provided by the user. So um, yeah, if a simulation component should be coupled with Mosaic then this component API has to be implemented by the user and um, yeah so that you can couple your component um, in in mosaic we call the implementation the simulator and within the simulator there is then the model um, so this model contains um, yeah the the calculation which should be happen and um, and all the information about um, about a component for example <coughs> and the idea is that you can easily um, instantiate multiple instances of this model so for example when you have a PV model <coughs> you want to instantiate 20 instances so you have the same model but maybe you parameterize it differently <coughs> and want to have 20 instances which you can then um, yeah, place an electricity grid for doing your simulation. <coughs> yeah, so now I want to look a bit more into this um, component API and how this can be implemented. So we have two different parts of this. So here on the left hand side um, is shown the low level API and on the right hand side the high level API. <coughs> At the top of the figure you see what has to be implemented by the user and what is provided by Mosaic. So in the low level API Mosaic is just opening a socket and everything else has to be implemented by the user. So the communication um, takes place using TCP sockets and then JSON messages and this would then be uh, have to be implemented by the user. But for um, the most common programming languages like Java, MATLAB, c -sharp, we provide um, a high-level API where Mosaic provides already the socket communication, the JSON handling and a base interface so that the user um, integrating a, simulator, uh, a model just has to implement this abstract base interface um, yeah, for integrating the model. Um, yeah, but how looks this component API? So we have here two phases, uh, two phases uh, first the composition and then the simulation. And here are shown the four most important um, calls of this API. There are some more, but these are the most important. On the left hand side, we have mosaic, on the right hand side, we have the component. And the first call is the init which just um, initializes the simulator. Here we get um, the information about time resolution which can be used and some simulator parameters which might be interesting. Um, then the component can yeah, do some initialization and send back the metadata. <coughs> now we um, yeah, want to look a bit, a bit more in detail how this metadata looks like. So this is a simple JSON structure so we can provide here some information about the API version and we can define um, the type of the simulator so this can be time-based, event-based or hybrid this was introduced in the last uh, release of Mosaic uh, with the version 3 so in the old uh, Mosaic 2 we just had the time-based which was um, self-stepping with persistent data. So this means the simulators um, 
had to say when they want to be stepped. So this was discrete step, um, discrete time simulation. And yeah, now we introduced um, the new event-based type. Here, a simulation step is uh, only triggered when um, there are new attributes arrived for for the simulator and we have non-persistent data. Then we have the third type, um, which is called hybrid, uh, which can have um, attributes which are more time-based or more event-based. So here um, the user can define which attributes should um, be triggered by new input and which should be non-persistent or which should be persistent. After defining a type, we have to define our models, which are included, uh, which are part of the simulator. Uh, first, we have to provide a model name, then um, the parameters. These are the um, yeah, the values which are provided um, before the simulation to yeah, to parameterize the model. Then we have the attributes, which are the values which are exchanged during the simulations so of the inputs and the outputs of the simulator and then for the hybrid type we can define which attributes should be triggered and which should be non-persistent um, so after this metadata is returned to mosaic now the um, create will be called here um, some model parameters can be provided, for example, here usually the information how many um, model entities should be created can be given and then in the component the model instances are created and um, the list of those instances or entities is returned to Mosaic so that Mosaic knows which models were created. After this composition phase the simulation starts in a loop, so um, yeah, the calculation and the components can be done and for this Mosaic calls the step function. Here Mosaic provides information about the current simulation time, a dictionary with the inputs, which is the data from the other simulators, which um, is needed here for calculation in, in the new component. And um, since Mosaic 3 also max advanced, which can be used for some uh, optimization uh, but is not really needed in the most use cases. Then here the component um, yeah, does its con calculation in the, in the model in, uh, instances and when it finished um, it returns the next step. So it says uh, I want to be stepped in 30 seconds simulation time for example. For the event based or hybrid this can also be none, so this would mean that um, the component doesn't need to be stepped as long as there would be a new event. And then after the step, Mosaic can call the get data. Um, the data request is also a dictionary um, in which is defined which data Mosaic wants to have from a component. So then the component, which uh, usually has a has a cache for the results of the step and provides then the, the data back to Mosaic um, and can also provide the time for which this data is valid and um, yeah provides then the values for, for the attributes. I already um, talked about non-persistent and persistent um, data so now I would like to go a bit more into detail about this topic um, for the the scheduling and synchronization and um, yeah validity of data so here we have um, an example for a time based and for an event based or hybrid um, simulation we have um, a simulator a and a simulator B and there's a data flow from simulator a to B then here we have the simulation time from 0 to 4 and um, here we see that as we have a data flow from A to B always simulator A should be stepped first. So yeah first simulator A is stepped 
will provide some data for simulator B and then simulator B is stepped. But this both uh, simulators have different step sizes, so then at um, simulation time 1, just simulator B will be executed uh, and simulator A not. But simulator B needs uh, input from simulator A. And here in this time-based simulation, we have a persistent output. So this means that the output from simulator A is persistent until we have a new value. So until this time step 2 when it will be executed again, which means that simulator B will get again the same value um, from simulator A from the first execution here. And then in simulation step 2, simulator A will be executed again and so here simulator B will get some new data and so on. So here uh, we see this an example for the event-based. Here we see that um, first simulator A is executed but here maybe it doesn't provide any output which is needed by simulator B so simulator B will not be stepped but then simulator A will be executed again at um, time step 1 and here it seems to have some output which is needed for simulator B so now simulator B is triggered um, but as you can see here our for the event based our output is not persistent so the data will be just valid for this one um, simulation time the results uh, the, the output of a simulator can also be um, yeah, sent for a future time step so here simulator A is um, stepped at simulation time 2 and the output might be valid for t uh, time step 3 so that um, simulator B will just be stepped at time step 3 and not at time step 2. Um, another new feature of Mosaic 3 related to this um, event based feature is super dense time or same time loops. Um, so Mosaic 3 allows also now to to use this uh, when we have a cyclic dependency so we have a connection from A to B and from B to A. Um, for example when you have a controller in a simulation then you usually have this um, cyclic dependencies and in the old mosaic we then have to add a time shifted connection which means that one connection um, would be active for a later time step but now we can also use the same time loop so that we can iterate um, between these two simulators without progressing in simulation time so we're still in simulation time i and can communicate multiple times back and forth. After looking now into the component API and the scheduling, now I would like to go um, a bit more in detail about the scenario API and the scenario script. So, um, yeah, with the scenario script, we can define which um, components should be started and how they should be connected so that we can execute um, a co-simulation. The script is um, written in Python, um, but here in this example it's just um, written as um, pseudocode. <clears throat> so first we have to import Mosaic, and then we will um, start our simulators which would call then the init function of the simulators. So our simulators here are a grid, a house, a PV and a controller. These are implemented in different programming languages in Python and Java and in MATLAB and in Python again. And um, then we create this so-called mosaic word and provide the information about the simulators we have. After we created the simulators, the next step is um, yeah, to really initialize this um, simulators with the word dot start. And after that, we can instantiate the model entities and uh, also parameterize them. 
So after we created the simulators, now we can create the, the model entities first for the grid, and then for the households, and then for the PV system, and then for the control. So here we can see that we provided some extra information for the grid. So we provided the, um, the topology. For the household, we provided the information that we want to have four households. Uh, for the PV, we added the information that we want to have two, and we parameterized the size somehow. And for the controller, we also added some information about the uh, multiple agent, multi-agent system. So here we can see that we have already now a lot of uh, model entities created, and some of them are already connected, like here with the script topology or with this. Um, agent structure uh, but not all of them are connected so the next step would be to connect the models uh, via data flows so first we connect here the houses to the grid then we connect um, the PVs to the grid and then the controller to the houses and to the PV system we can see here that we um, define here the attributes so here from the houses, the attribute active active power is provided and sent to the grid. After we did these connections, we have a yeah a scenario which can be executed. So we call the word run and provide some information how long the simulation should be. So here it's um, yeah for um, three thousand six hundred seconds. So after um, giving a bit overview of the functionality of Mosaic, I want now to summarize. So Mosaic allows to integrate and reuse heterogeneous simulation components without implementing integrated um, new simulation models from the scratch. Um, it allows a flexible specification of scenarios um, and handles all the coordination of data exchange and scheduling. It allows discrete time and discrete event simulation coupled uh, with different types of models. It's open source and it has an extensive ecosystem of models, interfaces and wrappers to be easy to use. Um, yeah, If you want to get in contact about Mosaic, um, you can write to the mailing list mosaic minus users. Um, you can write a direct mail to mosaic at office.de or you can also open issues directly in GitLab if you um, have maybe future requests, feature requests or um, see some problems or something. We also have some demos. We have um, some tutorials which are <laughs> available at read the docs. Um, but we have the code for this for this um, tutorial is also available in GitLab um, in this at this link, and you can also find at GitLab.com mosaic examples um, some other um, yeah scenario examples which can be executed there. In the next video, I will show these tutorials um, and explain a little bit more how you can integrate models uh, with Mosaic and go a bit more in detail through the yeah, real Python code.